Good morning, good morning. What a morning, a day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in him. We want to thank God for this day. The beginning of the weekend, even as we uh, continue thanking God for the entire week, the Lord has been gracious to us. The Lord has been good to us. And the Lord has been uh, so loving and so caring for us. And that's why we have no option but to come and approach his presence with thanksgiving, even as we thank God for his tranquility, his peace, his grace, and his mercy. And therefore, by God's grace, we want to really thank God because of his goodness. But also remembering that uh, we also wake up to the news, and especially yesterday, of uh, the, 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 the death of uh, the, the, the queen, uh, and especially Queen Elizabeth II, who have been one of the longest serving monarchy, uh, in fact, even in the world. And we want to thank God so much that the Lord has been so gracious, that he has been able to grant peace even to the nations. And especially us as a country who also were uh, uh, the British colony, and not only forgetting that even today we are in the Commonwealth, and therefore we have something in common. And we want to pray that the Lord will grant um, peace, grace, and comfort to our brothers and sisters in England and all over the world, even as we see the end of an era of, uh, of Queen Elizabeth, but also welcoming also another era of uh, uh, King Charles at the third. And we want to thank God that in all these occurrences of life, there is something that has always stood. Our God has been constant. Our God has been faithful. And even in all times and in all difficulties and challenges of life, we can depend on him because he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Let us pray even as we catch up with the word of God. Father, we thank you so much for this great morning that you offer to us, a day that reminds us that the newness of life, Jehovah God, emanates and Father, its sources from above. We want to thank you for allowing us to be even the remnants of this day, we don't take it for granted. And we pray that, Lord Jesus, this day turn out to be a blessing to us. And even as we go through the weekend, we pray that this day and this weekend will be a blessing, a weekend of your favor, a weekend of your protection and cover, and a weekend that your grace will be sufficient for us. We also pray for your peace among us and the peace of the people in the UK, that, Lord, even as they uh, come to terms with the news of the demise of the queen, that, Lord, your grace and your peace will be with them. We also pray for others who are suffering bereavement in various areas and uh, in the lives of our friends and members of our families. We pray that your peace and your blessing and your comfort will be their portion. Even as we listen to your word this morning, speak and minister among us. Your servants are listening. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, brethren, it has been a new month and the month of September, a month that we have been able to pick up the theme of giving. And remember, it is not only giving, but we are convicted that giving must be a way of worship. In other words, it is the desire of our God that as we give our offerings, as we give our tithes, as we give alms in acknowledging and also appreciating that the Lord has blessed us, that we may be able to share our blessing with our, our brothers and sisters, even as we come in his presence to give thanksgiving offerings because of the things that he has done for us, just in an acknowledgement that it's not by power, it is not by might, but it's by the Spirit of God that even the far we have come, we need to give in a way that it worships and honors God. You know what? Any giving that does not in any way honor God, it cannot be able to pass the standards of a giving which is a sacrifice. Do you remember there is someone who offered before God and God rejected his offering because it has never met the, 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 the threshold? And I want to remind us that God has not changed. He is the same. His standard stands. Yes, the patterns of the world may change. Fashions may come and go. But it's good to remember that our God remains and his standards cannot be stooped any law by anyone in regardless of who they are. Even kings, we thought that sometimes they would worship God in their own way. 
and even in honor, not even by any means with dishonor. Somebody like David, imagining that he can carry the ark of the covenant with a golden cart. Because gold was rated to be for the king. And because he was dealing with the king of kings, he thought that now it will show more honor when he does what he was doing in honor to God. But God rejected it because God must be worshipped. God must be served. We must walk with our God within and also following the statutes, the rules, and especially the standard that he has been able to raise. Brethren, Remember the sons of Elon died at the altar just because they went and they lit fires that were not acceptable in God's presence. And don't forget they had gone to give a sacrifice, but God rejected even those fires because they were not according to what God had commanded. And both of them being sons of a, of a, of a priest and a high priest for that matter, they died at the altar. That is our God. And therefore, even as we give our offerings, we should never ever imagine that the Lord will lower our standards that he may receive them. It is keeps and puts me a lot of awe and reference. Sometimes even out of fear. Sometimes the way I approach before God to give. And even sometimes I know we have just been received by God by his grace. But the truth is, sometimes we fall, we fall, we fall away and even under even the, the, the standards that he has put before us. And therefore, it has taken uh, this opportunity of the second two months that we may be able in depth, in depth to deal with issues giving as a way of worship to our God. Because God has called us to worship him. In fact, the sole reason that we are created, brethren, is to be able to find fellowship with God and to worship him. Remember, even when the children of Israel were leaving the land of captivity, Moses told Pharaoh, allow these people to live here and go to the desert that they may worship their God. Because God had to teach them, even in the wilderness, that he is a God who is powerful and able, almighty, that is able to do all things so that in reference and also in return and also in submission and in response, they may be able to worship him as God. And therefore, God has always followed that that we may continue to learn to worship him as he is, and it will always bring a blessing to us. And therefore, this day, I just want to introduce and bring an important, an important, uh, uh, an important thing that we need to understand how, why we should give. Brethren, I want to pick up some several reasons why we should give. Can I even put the word M-S-M-U-S-T? Why must we give? Because it's not an option. God does not by any means, by the way, imagine that we can just enjoy our blessings and continue walking around without the gift of giving. Because God is a giving God. If there is anyone who has ever given and no one can be able by any means to surpass God in giving, it is our God. That even today he has given us the gift of life freely, freely. Now people know how expensive even to, to buy oxygen after the COVID-19 pandemic that we have been in an amazing way deceiving the masses and the wealth of God just merely by the mere grace of God. And therefore, it is important to know their, their reasons that we must give. Number one, I want to bring you to the importance of some few things that I want to bring forth. Number one, it is important that we may be able to remember that it is God's command that all of us we may be prepared to give. Now, allow me to mention and say that when we give, we don't give so that in any way we may be able, by any means that God is asking that we give, so that he may be able to find any, okay, any advantage. Or let me say, we are not giving so that at least God is ask, not asking us to give for his good. In fact, it is for our own good. And I just want to say today, God is the owner of everything. By the way, the Bible says that he is the owner of all that we can see and what we cannot see. Because the heavens and the earth belongs to him. He is the creator, the sole creator and owner of all things. And therefore, why should he ask that we give? Is it because he wants and he is in, our, in any want? No, by any means. It is good to say he asks us 
that we may be able to give because he knows it is for our goods and our blessing. Allow me also to say one of the reasons that we should also remember and the attitude of giving, that when we give, it shows our love to God. By the way, you remember when Jesus was asked, and what is the greatest commandment? He said two things that are important, but are the same. He said, love your, the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. And he said, and the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. Not only giving yourself to God, but also to your brothers and sisters. And I can tell you, brethren, it is a fact that we are not supposed just to love God with our hearts and our, and our minds, but even with our wealth, our strength, and our might. And by the way, that is what Jesus said in the book of Matthew, chapter 22 and verse 37. It is important to know that God requires and always wait on us that we may learn the wisdom and the attitude of giving, that it is an attitude of love. We are not giving because we must give, but we are giving because it is important to give because we love the Lord. In other words, not by command, but because we love. Love the Lord your God with all who you are and what I have. Therefore, when I'm waking up in the morning, preparing to give any sacrifice, even at the altar, I should always remember that my giving is not because God by any means will benefit from it, but it is a show and acknowledgement of love that my gift is supposed to be grooved in the attitude of my love to God. In other words, I give because I love. Have you ever known how easy it is to give to the people you love? How easy it is to give to my sons and daughters that I can give and sacrifice everything that I have. I may sacrifice a very important thing that I needed just to make sure that they are comfortable. That is what we call love. How much can we sacrifice because of how much we love God? The attitude of love. It is one of the highest important understandings and principles that we need to hold when we are thinking about giving to God. Because if our giving will be a worship to God and a sweet aloma that rises to God, one thing is true. We must give lovingly. Love must motivate us. Our love for our God must motivate us on our giving. And allow me as I bring it to a cross that one of the most important things that I just want also to bring to us is it is important to remember that Jesus, Jesus said this, and I think it's very important, that where our treasures is, is where our heart is. Do you know that even issues of eternity are connected with how we give? Why do we give ourselves fully to our God? Have we surrendered our beings? Have we surrendered our minds? Have we surrendered our spirit and our souls? Have we surrendered our lives to God? Have we in any way allowed ourselves to be fully, totally sold out for our God? And if we have done it, then amazingly, brethren, we are on the right track. Because giving is not only a worship here, but also is connected with our eternity. That's why Jesus said, and you know what? Where your treasure is, my brother and sister, where my treasure is, that's where my heart is. And therefore, I want to encourage us that even as we continue to prepare to give, and even as we prepare to understand the reason why we should give. I thought it was important that we start this uh, Friday with the attitudes of giving. That we give because not that God by any means requires for any good that we give for himself, but it is for our good. Number two, we give because we love the Lord. And number three, we give because our giving is totally connected even our to eternity. Our lives here on earth and our lives tomorrow and even eternity, it is connected with how we give ourselves to God. How we give our whole, our strength, our minds, our spirits, and our wealth to our God. May the Lord bless you so much, even as we continue to accept to give willingly and without being by any means pushed by anyone, 
but giving out of love. Giving because we love our God and giving because we are looking and seeking for eternity with our God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.